everyone, I'm Susan Sand on the BBC News. Today we'll be looking at desalination with Aaron Watts. Desalination is a worldwide problem. Imagine walking up and finding out you have to move because the government is going to build a big machine to help the water problem. And 15 years later, the machine still isn't up and running. That's all I'm going to say for now before I pass it over to Aaron. Hi, I'm Aaron. As you already know, I'm in seventh grade. Today I'll tell you about desalination. Desalination is a process used to make water pure. This process started in the late 1970s. Desalination has pros and cons. It's not perfect. In many cases, desalination is used when other water sources are gone, so desalination doesn't have a strict place it's being used. It is commonly used to clean or distill seawater. Desalination is being used to solve the Earth's water issues, but it won't be able to do this. This process is very expensive, but it's reliable. Desalination is, using, is done using a desalination plant. A desalination plant is a machine, not an actual plant. We have Dr. Walker joining us for an interview on how desalination is bad for the environment. Dr. Walker is a specialist in desalination from Desal Freshwater. So, Dr. Walker, what's the damage done? Well, thank you, Erin. You see, most of the damage is done in the sea or in other water sources. It mostly <laughs> is in polluted coastal areas. You see, brine is created when the salt gets separated from the pure water and this is released into the, from the desalination plant into the water source. It starts destroying the underground habitats and killing small animals and organisms like plankton and tiny fish. Sometimes adult fish can even be killed. And this can be done in two ways, entrainment and impingement. But I'd rather leave those concepts for the moment because they're very complicated. So desalination doesn't cause major problems? Oh no, no, no. Desalination effects are huge. For desalination to have energy to function, the plant needs fossil fuels. To get the fossil fuels, engineers have to dig big holes in the ground. This destroys habitats and sends animals on the run. And this can also lead to endangered species being wiped out, their entire ecosystems. It, that is the brine, also affects human health. You see, desalination also causes climate change. So if there, it causes so many major problems, why is it being used? Actually, what are, how are these problems caused? Well, unfortunately, most of these are caused by the brine flowing into the water sources like lakes and seas and rivers. You see, the high salt content mixes in the water. This water is toxic and can suffocate marine and aquatic life. In this harmful brine, there's also things called heavy metals like PCBs. This toxic water not only harms marine life, but it also harms us humans. There are certain elements in the water that can cause humans to get cancer. Desalination is still being used even though it causes problems because in some countries it's the only choice that they have. Some countries don't have any other water source with potable or usable water. Another major problem caused is climate change. Anthropogenic global warming is caused by the burning of fossil fuels. And when the fossil fuels are burnt, they release gases like carbon dioxide. These gases are called greenhouse gases. Greenhouse gases, gases they get trap heat, they float up into the atmosphere and then they're stuck there, they can't escape. This heat builds up, makes the earth warm, or the temperature starts to rise. This process is called the greenhouse effect, it leads to global warming. Wow, I didn't realize desalination was such a big deal. It really is something that we should be concerned about. The idea of toxins in our water sources is really worrying mm. and makes me want to ask questions about what is being done to fix this problem. Mm -hmm. There must be a better way of managing the desalination process to dispose of this brine in a safe way. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming to talk to us about the 
problems of desalination, Dr. Walker, and helping us to better understand the damage that it, this process causes to the environment and, and to our health, too. You're most welcome, Erin. Thank you very much. This chart is talking about Earth's current water situation. It's showing that most of Earth's water is either salty or frozen. This shows how much desalination is necessary. Without desalination, parts of the world would be dying of thirst as we speak, and countries would be fighting over the small amounts of water left. Scientists might have even been trying to make fresh water. So now you're wondering about the ice and the salt water. Well. These are used to make fresh water. They are put into a desal plant, which makes fresh and potable water. The waste from this is thrown out into the sea. Desalination methods are all different from each other, but they have similar pro processes used in them to make fresh water. The method you are seeing now is reverse osmosis. First, water from the sea is brought to the desal plant and the process is started. The first process used here, as you can see, is pretreatment. Pretreatment is to get all the big and easier particles out. After that, it goes to reverse osmosis. Reverse osmosis is one of the many methods that can be used. Reverse osmosis is the part that requires fossil fuels. The material used to cre create to create extremely large amounts of energy. After all that, fresh water is produced, and the waste is unfortunately thrown back into the sea to cause problems and stir things up. Many places are affected by salinization. Salinization is when water becomes salty because of various reasons, human or otherwise. Most of these places affected turn to desalination for a solution or to fix their salinization problems. But this does but does this really fix things or does it just stir up more problems? Lots of times after a couple of years they realize that it creates more problems that need fixing. This is bad for the country because it wastes the country's money by fixing all the desalination problems and then having them start all over again. Even though it gives potable and clean water, it doesn't help the environment or the country's economy. Countries don't normally rely on desalinated water because of the problems it causes and the costs. That is another way that it's bad for the country's economy state, because it costs so much to run and function. What will happen if a country, is fully, re if a country fully relied on desalination water? Nobody knows. Now there are many countries around the world that use desalination. Notice that most of the countries that use it are situated around the equator. This is because salinization can be caused by evaporating of water containing salt or water full of salt. The highest concentration of desalination use is in the Middle East. It represents more than half of the world's desalination capacity. This is a natural desert region, so there isn't many fresh water sources in this part of the world. However, these countries are able to pay for expensive desalination plants because of their oil-rich deserts and oil wealth. Now we will hear from a scientist trying to find solutions to desalination and its problems. Dr. Black studies at the University of Potable in Bryan. Please welcome Dr. Jessica Black. Dr. Black, we know what can happen when brine flows into the sea or another water source, and we know what harm desalination can bring. But how can we fix it? Is there any way to stop the terrible desalination problems? Fortunately, there are ways to solve the problems. Actually, there are many options. Some ways can be to invent a completely new processes. Throw out the brine and somewhere else or find another substance to use for the energy needed for desalination. Finding a new process could take a very long time to get together, so not many are jumping to that option. 
If there was no other possibility, then that would be the only way to fix the problem. Personally, I think that finding somewhere else for the brine is impossible. Finding a new substance is the easiest and best so far. So there is hope for the countries that thought desalination was the best and would fix all their worries. That's good to know. What you have said are all complicated and are things for professionals and scientists. I want to know if there's anything somebody like me could do. The action I think would be the most effective is using less water or putting limits on your water use. This could, will help your town, country, continent to hopefully not, not even get in a whole desalination issue. If you use less fresh water, then there will be more for later and it will take longer for it to run out. Recycling water when you can will also help, help preserve our fresh water sources for the future. Wow, I've learned so much during this interview. I can see now that we have to be open to other ways of tackling this pro problem. I'm confronted by my own water use patterns and will try to recycle and use less water. I'm happy and I'm, that I'm able to contribute to the fixing of desalination problems and to help the future generations. Thank you, Doc Wilbrock, for making your time available for this interview. tomorrow will be partly cloudy with a little chance of rain. For now, good night. And make sure you watch the water that you use to help the future. Goodbye. <laughs>